I am really excited because today we are gonna be doing a classroom escape room. I wanted to show you behind the scenes the details of our escape room. Good morning, YouTube. First of all, my dress. I know I'm probably gonna get questions on it. Really, really pretty. I got it from TJ Maxx, so unfortunately, I cannot link it. It was just one of those things that I happened to stumble across, but it is really comfortable. So if you do find it, I highly recommend you grab it. I had a really good weekend. On Saturday, I had to get up at 6.30 a.m., which I almost never do. I'm totally that person that sleeps in as late as they want on the weekends. However, one of my former students, I had her like two years ago, was having a karate belt testing back in the old town that I used to teach in and I still keep in communication with her I'm Facebook friends with like her mom and her grandmother and I still text them and I still talk on the phone with her like at least once a month so she had invited me to go to her belt testing I really wanted to go it was about a two-hour drive each way however it was totally worth it I loved getting to see her again and my philosophy is once my student always my student and I will still support my students outside of the classroom for the rest of their lives so long as they want me to then on our way home we stopped by my parents which they live like an hour from where we we live now about halfway between where we live now and where we used to live and last Thursday was my dad's birthday and then Father's Day is coming up so we kind of did a combined visit then we came home I had to edit my vlog and then yesterday Billy and I did sleep in you know we went to the gym I did clean out our pantry and organize that I posted a story on Instagram stories if you saw that and then I printed out some stuff for an activity we're gonna do in math this Friday I'll wait and tell you about it when it actually comes but for now I need to go grab some coffee and get to school Good morning, how may I help you? Good morning, can I get a medium iced latte with the cookie dough flavor, please? Uh -huh. That'll be, be it. Thank you. So I wanted to show you what we are doing for math this week because I mentioned last week that I like to do projects and things to keep them engaged and interested in what we're doing until the end of the year. So I actually have my blocks doing two different things this week. So I'm gonna start with my block two. They are doing a sport franchise project. So basically they're going to start a sports franchise from scratch. They get to pick which league it's in and then they're gonna control all aspects of it. So the location, the finances, the advertising, the budget, merchandise, concessions, a stadium, all of that stuff. So we're gonna put them into groups of three or four, and then they're going to get a folder. So we actually already had these folders prepared from one of the teachers last year. She had gone through and like made all of these, so we're just going to use them as is, and we have like little sticky tabs that identify all of the different parts. So one of the first things they have is like a budget worksheet. So they're gonna get $1.6 billion to start with, but they'll have opportunities to be able to make more money, and they're going to have to keep up with their budget sheet, and they're going to be like writing checks and they have to balance their budget sheet after an expenditure or a gain and they cannot ever have a negative balance. One of the first things that they have to do is decide on their city. So in here under city selection, we have a list in here of all of the different cities, their population, and then how much it would cost to start up the franchise there. So our students are going to have to kind of think about what would be the smartest choice for them, but they will get to have some control over that. The next thing they're going to do is write a proposal letter to the commissioner which will be me or my team teacher and it's going to have their team name and it's going to have what city they want to operate in and they have to write at least three paragraphs then they're going to come up with a team logo and again they're going to have to write an informative report one to two paragraphs just kind of explaining like their choice of name their logo their uniform and then i will have to approve it and then this is where more of the math comes in so they're going to have to come up with merchandise and concessions and they're going to have to price it all and they're going to have to like order it and they'll be able to make more money from the concessions sessions. Then they're actually going to write a speech to kind of highlight the benefits of having a stadium and all of that. Then for marketing, they have to come up with two slogans and then they're actually gonna come up with a radio commercial or like an advertisement for a newspaper or a magazine. Then some of the extra things are gonna develop like team nachos to sell at their concession stand. They will have to define some vocabulary terms. They're gonna create a weekly concession sales report and weekly merchandise sales reports. They're going to actually build a stadium if there is time. But I'm really excited about this project because overall I think it will keep them very engaged. It's a lot of like real life 
life math with balancing the budget sheet and making deposits and expenses and all of that good stuff. So I am excited to do that with them. Then for block one, they're actually going to be creating a math board game centered around one of the topics. So we're gonna have them start by just creating a circle map of all of the different topics they remember covering this year. And then day one, which will be today, they're going to kind of be introduced to the components of a board game. So the directions, the purpose, which will be like the questions, and then the actual board and pieces. And the first thing they have to do as a group is they have to decide on the topic. They have to name the game, come up with a theme for the game, and then tell me how the players are gonna learn and practice math skills by playing the game. Then on day two, they'll actually write the directions and they'll start creating questions and they're gonna draw out the design of the board game. Day three, they're gonna finish writing their final copies. They're gonna actually create the board game. And then on day four, we're actually going to play the different games and then we're going to vote on some different awards, best board game design or theme, best practice with math skills and clearest directions. So before I talk about my morning here at school, I wanted to tell you all about my drive to school this morning because it was a little bit hectic. We have gotten tons of rain in the past like two weeks. A lot of you have actually reached out to me and asked if we were okay because lots of Maryland has been getting really bad flooding. Yes, where I actually live has not been bad. We've been completely fine. However, on my drive to school this morning, I typically go the back way to work because I get my Dunkin' Donuts and then it's easier to just keep going in that direction. So I take a back road. That area does flood really, really bad. And I didn't think about it this morning. I just started going and at one point I was passing a guy and he was kind of playing out cones. I was like, hmm, I wonder what that's for. But I went past him, got further down, ended up coming to like the road being blocked off. The flooding was impassable. You could not go through there at all. So I had to turn around and go back. And then going back, I realized the guy was playing out a sign that said road closed. So it would have been really helpful if I had seen that beforehand or if he had like flagged me down and told me, but it's fine. I ended up getting to school about 15 minutes later than usual, but it's all good. I was still on time. I was still a little bit early, but not as early as I usually am. So this morning, my students are currently at cultural arts, although the cultural arts teachers had to take them to an assembly. I just had to help out my team teacher with entering some FMP data. After we test all of the kids, we have to enter it into the computer, but this time around, only the ELA teachers are testing them, but we're all helping to enter data into the computer. So I just spent about 45 minutes doing that. I have 15 minutes left of my planning time, so I'm just gonna kind of, so I'm just gonna kind of review those, so I'm just going to kind of review those projects that I'm having my students do today so that I know exactly what I'm having them do, look over the social studies lesson, and then go pick up my kids. So I had to show you all this super cute poster that one of my students made me. So they drew my logo, pocket full of primary. There's a sloth up here and the apple and more sloths down there. It's just so, so cute. Love my students so much. I'm ready for summer, but at the same time, I'm not ready to let them go. Y'all should know by now I'm totally that person that does things like way the extra mile that's totally not necessary, but I get enjoyment out of it, so it's worth it. I showed you all the sports franchise project that I'm working on in my block two. So since I am the commissioner and they have to get approval from me, I like set up an office at the back and I would call them back like one by one and I would sit in the chair and I had a chair here for them to sit in and I have my little plaque from TJ Maxx that says I am the boss. And then one of my students made me this little name tag that says Commissioner Foray. And like I even set up, I have a little candle, I have some flowers, I have my little pencil case that has like my pens and my highlighter. I have this approved stamp that I think I had gotten a while back at like Staples, but I'm using this as they write their proposals. I stamp it if they are approved. And then I've been stapling this to it. This is like their welcome letter, or their like approval letter that they were accepted into that league. So I staple that, highlight it, and then they have to start writing me checks and I have them come back to me in order to get those approved. I am so enjoying this project. It is now actually five o'clock. So after school from four o'clock to five o'clock, I had to work an hour like additional time, but I was paid for it. So it's all good. But I am the facilitator for fourth grade for CDM, collaborative decision making. So I had to work an extra hour just to kind of finish up all the paperwork, double check things. I had to go into our students' QM folders and just make sure everything was there. So I just finished that up. I'm going to get out of here and head to the gym, go home, have a nice productive but relaxing night, and I will catch up with you all in the morning. Good morning, YouTube. I am so 
exhausted today because I did not sleep well last night. I got into bed around 11 and I did not fall asleep until after 2 a.m. So I slept in until 7. Didn't mean to. I totally meant to get up at like 6.30, but all of a sudden I woke up and it was 7 and it's now 7.15. So that shows you the minimal amount of effort that I put into getting ready this morning. However, I did wear a white shirt and a black blazer because yesterday when I wore that white dress with like the blue at the top, one of my students just so happened to be wearing something very similar. Hers was a shirt, but still all day people were like, you two look alike. I'm like, yep. So yesterday as we were leaving, she came up to me and she wanted to like plan our outfits for today so that we matched again. So she told me to wear one of those jackets that business ladies wear and a white shirt. So we will match again today, which is always fun. I need to get to school and get to my team planning with the fourth grade team. So I will catch up with you all later on. Good morning, can I get a medium iced latte with the cookie dough flavor, please? That'll be it. Thank you. It is towards the end of my planning time. I've kind of just been doing a bunch of miscellaneous things during this time. I had a couple of errands that I had to run, like delivering papers to people. I had to get copies made for our programs for the Paul Printer's reading event for Monday, just little things like that. I also went through my grade book and I have new copies of all of the missing assignments from students. And I'm going to be like super careful with these rather than giving it to the student and having them then complete it on their own and turn it into me. Like they will complete it in front of me, like in my classroom. These papers are not leaving my room. That way I can make sure that they actually get done because when I give papers to students they do not always make it back to me so I'm determined to get all of the missing work in and then I will basically be done with grading for the year besides our social studies assessment which we are taking on Thursday so I have about 10 minutes left in my planning time I'm just gonna kind of look over my plans for today get myself together and then I will catch up with you all later on so I am not ashamed to admit that we are at the point of the year where I don't want to call it a bribe but I have a very big group of students in my dismissal room at the end of the day and it's usually very chaotic and I don't like the end of the day to be chaotic. I like it to be nice and calm. So my students who were quiet got skittles and quickly enough, my entire room was silent and it was the best dismissal we've had all school year. Good morning, YouTube. Remember how I mentioned last week that after field day, I feel like I just never recover and like I'm tired every day from then until the end of the school year? That is exactly how I feel right now. I don't know why, I'm just super tired. I did get to bed earlier last night, still wasn't super early, but I got to bed earlier than I did the night before. I'm still just exhausted. Oh, and I need summer vacation just because like I personally need to like relax and rejuvenate. I think I have some kind of meeting this morning, but I don't know what it is, so I'm gonna go grab me some coffee coffee, get to school, and then I will catch up with you there. Good morning, can I get a medium ice latte with the cookie dough flavor, please? Okay. That'll, be That'll be it. Thank you. So today the cultural arts teachers brought in a snack for the month of June. So I went to the lounge and I got some popcorn and just a sugar cookie, but it's the little things that get you through the day sometimes. It is already lunchtime and it's actually my day to stay in for recess, yay. <laughs> but for the meeting this morning, I told you I wasn't sure what it was about. It was a lot of just like end of the year stuff. However, breakfast was provided, which was awesome. I did bring breakfast from home. I had some egg muffins, so I just snacked on like some fruit, but it's always nice when food is included. And then I showed you all the snack, which was great. During my my planning time my team teacher and I met because we had to plan out some groups because next week our students are going to do something called decimal olympics but I'll give you more information on that in my next vlog that will be next Tuesday then we had shortened blocks this morning so I had block one and block two for 50 minutes each and then we're going to be in homerooms this afternoon because we do have an assembly for cup kudos which is like our school-wide incentive system our students are going to be doing are you smarter than a crofting cub which is like our school mascot so basically they're going to pick out the students who have turned in their completed cards and they're going to pick out teachers and we're gonna go against each other answering questions should be fun that will take us up to the end of the day so I will catch up with you then it is now the end of the day so the assembly where our students answered questions against the teachers was actually a lot of fun it was very loud in there because the kids were all like yelling and cheering which is exciting and I know like when their names got called they felt like celebrities and like they were all high-fiving and they went up there and it was really exciting of course the students ended up winning I did end up going up and answering a question against a third grader and it was just it was a lot of fun so I'm 
glad that my school does things like that. I just feel like they're really good about having like a school-wide community and like and just coming together for those kinds of activities. I just think that it's a great thing and it's fun and it's motivational for the students and it celebrates all of their hard work and yeah, that about sums it up. I'm gonna get out of here. It's right about 410. I need to get to the gym, get home, and as always, I just have a quite a few things I've got to get done at home because our landlord is coming this weekend to kind of do like our year walkthrough because we have a two-year lease. So halfway through he comes through and just kind of does a walkthrough. And we're gonna be out of town the day before. We're going up to Pennsylvania. So I need to make sure that everything looks good and is ready to go before we leave. So on that note, I will catch up with you all in the morning. I feel like I've not shown you all things that I've gotten in the mail recently, partially because I haven't been ordering quite as much, but that usually changes in the summer, don't worry. But also, I don't know, I've just been busy and I end up forgetting to vlog it. So while it is on my mind, I got home recently. It's like nine, almost nine o'clock. Look, it's 8.52 currently and I'm just now getting home. It's a long story, but I came home to this big package from Walmart and I wanted to show you this because I strictly buy my cardstock from Walmart. You would think that you would be able to get it cheaper on Amazon because most things you typically can get cheaper on Amazon, but for whatever reason with cardstock, I can never find it cheaper on Amazon. So I actually get my cardstock from Walmart. I used to buy it in the store, but now it's easier just to buy it like in bulk on their website and have it shipped to me partially because it's really heavy. But my preference for cardstock, which I use cardstock all the time, is the Georgia Pacific cardstock. So it is 110 pound weight. It's 150 sheets, 92 bright. This pack typically costs like around $5, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, but that's actually really, really cheap for cardstock. So I actually bought five packs. Hopefully that will last me through the summer. And then I know this is really random and you're probably going to laugh at me because I know that it's for babies, but I have seen a lot of things on the internet about using this Johnson's Baby Soothing Vapor Bath for migraines. So like when you get a migraine, if you take a bath with this, it's supposed to help. I don't know if it's true, but I figured it's worth spending a couple dollars to find out. So I will keep you all updated and let you know if it helps. Good morning, YouTube. So last night after the gym, Billy and I ended up having to run some errands and I did not get home and like fully showered until like 10.30. So I was not super productive last night. I did print out stuff for tomorrow for the math activity that I'm doing with my students, but I did not get a whole lot else done, which kind of stinks, but it's okay. Good news is today we were encouraged by our school to rock the red, which the Capitals are in the finals for the Stanley Cup. That's hockey for those of you who don't know, and the Capitals are a DC team. And they've only been to the finals like one other time and they did not win. And currently they are up three to one. If they win the game tonight, then they win the Stanley Cup. So we were all encouraged to wear red. I'm not a huge hockey fan, so I don't have a capital shirt. So I just wore a red shirt that I had. So it says Netflix and grade. I will link this for you down below because I know I'm going to get a bunch of questions. It's from Trendy Teachers. So I will link the direct link to this shirt down in the description box for you all. I woke up very, very tired this morning. Like I had one of those nights where I felt like I slept well, but as soon as I woke up apparently I did not sleep well at all because like my eyes just still hurt and I don't feel rested at all so I'm gonna go get myself a coffee we do not have cultural arts today but it's okay because I need to get a lot of kids caught up on work for the last time for the school year so I will catch up with you all at school good morning, come back good morning. can I get a medium ice latte with the cookie dough flavor please oh, okay. that'll be yep that'll be it Thank you. So there was an SGA meeting this morning, Student Government Association, and one of my students who is in SGA, I guess they had donuts to like celebrate, and she came and brought me one. This thing is literally huge, like it's the size of my face but I'm not mad about it. So we did finish up our math board games today in block one. So I wanted to show you all of their titles. It's got a race, that should be an N. But we had Mathland, Math Rainforest, Alien Breakout, Math Attack, Math Island, Mathopoly, Mathlete Ships, and then Math Ocean. So one of these, not gonna say which one, is totally not like the others. I thought it was cute though. Overall, they did a great job. I did not get a chance to show you the physical game boards. Today, our students had about 10 minutes to finish their board game, and then they actually rotated playing all of them, and then they 
they voted for clearest directions, best board game design, and best math practice. And after we voted, I had them decide who was gonna take home their board game because I wanted it out of my room because I'm trying to start getting stuff packed up for the end of the year. And I just had to show you all this. I told you how we are doing the sports franchise project in my block two. So I am the commissioner and my students had to come up to me at the back table. I showed you my little desk area. So one of my students this morning brought me this name tag that she made me that says Commissioner Foray. Cutest thing ever. She used like my hand lettering style down here. So adorable. And look at this. She even laminated it. Like she was so proud of herself. She gave me this morning. She's like, Miss Foray, I even laminated it with my own laminator. I was just cracking up. Like this is just the cutest and sweetest thing. I'm seriously going to hold on to this and like treasure it forever. It is already the end of the day. And I know I did not vlog a whole lot. However, I had no cultural arts time today. So no planning time. Plus I had a lunch bunch during my lunch time. But overall, it was a good day. I mean, student behavior was, uh, I mean, it wasn't bad. They were just very talkative. But with all the projects we're doing in math, like it's kind of to be expected. So overall, it was a good day. I really enjoyed the time with my students. I enjoyed getting to see their board games in block one and how they finished them up. And I enjoyed seeing them play each other's board games and vote and just have really good like sportsmanship about it. And then we had to take a social studies assessment. So my students did really well on that overall. Then in block two, we finished up our sports franchise projects they didn't all finish and I completely understand that in fact no team actually finished all of it because we had to condense it down into four days I expected that to be the case however the math activity we're gonna do tomorrow is going to be even more fun so I'm excited I will show you all of those details in the morning I am starting to break down little areas of my room I'm not taking down too much stuff right now because I don't like to do that too early but I'm just starting to like take down little things here or there um, you can see over there on like oh hold on I took down all the student work from my wall so that I could send it home home but the good news is we can actually leave stuff up on our wall so I will leave that and it will already be set up for next year which is great I'm gonna wait and show you like Friday afternoon all of the changes that I've made I'm not gonna show you right now because I'm sure I'm gonna make more changes tomorrow but the hardest thing for me is the fact that as I clean up I have to just shove stuff in cabinets to get it like off of the floor or off of desks or whatever and that really bothers me because I love seeing my cabinets like nice and clean and organized but that's just what you have to do at the end of the year like it's not the end of the world once I get it all out of the cabinets in the fall I will reorganize it and it will all work out okay but for right now it just is really difficult for me so I'm gonna get out of here and I will catch up with you all tomorrow morning Good morning, YouTube. It is Friday. I'm wearing my Fry Yay shirt. I will link this for you down below. One of my subscribers sent it to me. Super comfortable, perfect for a Friday. I am really excited because today we are gonna be doing a classroom escape room. I didn't tell my students the details, but they do know that we're doing an escape room. I think it's gonna be so much fun. I will show you all the details when I get to school. However, <laughs> it was a lot more prep than I really anticipated. And I had to prep for four groups for my class and four groups for my team teacher's class, which was just a lot. I think if her and I do another one of these next year, we should plan it so that one of us does it one day and the other one does it the next day so that we can use the same materials because us both trying to do it on the same day is just craziness. I did not get to bed until like 1.30 in the morning and that was with Billy's help. Like Billy helped me prep pretty much her entire game and I prepped my entire game and it still took forever. So shout out to Billy. Thank you so much for helping me. I love you and I hope it's worth it. Like I really do hope that my students like really enjoy it. I'm going to get to school, get some coffee, not in that order. I'm going to get coffee, then I'm going to get to school and I will catch up with you all then. Good morning. Can I get a medium ice latte with the cookie dough flavor, please? That'll be it. Thank you. I wanted to show you behind the scenes the details of our escape room. Now, there's kind of a lot of different pieces, so I'm gonna do my best to explain it, but I wanted to start by saying, no, this is not my product. I did not make this. I bought it on TPT. Yes, I will link it for you down in the description box. If you are interested, the girl that I got it from makes like tons of different themed ones. This one is a pirate theme, and this is like a review of all fourth grade math skills, but I think she makes them for ELA as well. I just thought that this was a good way to kind of review everything we've learned this year and wrap up the 
the year. So as you can see, there are different colors. I'm gonna have four groups. So I have green, yellow, red, and blue, but all of it is the same for all of the colors. So I'm just going to show you one team example. So I'm gonna show you what blue would look like. First of all, at the very beginning, my students are going to get this letter, which just tells them that they have been captured by a crew of pirates. You can actually determine the time. As you can see, I wrote 60 minutes, but you could do as much time as you want. The seller did recommend 45 minutes, but I actually have a little bit of extra time today. So I upped it to 60 just because I don't want my students to feel too like stressed out. So they will get this letter and then to start, they also will get these materials. So they're gonna get a number one card and then they will get two number one envelopes. Now, I picked the ones for my class that have QR codes because I do have a set of five iPads that I got from Donors Choose that my students can use to scan the QR codes. However, my team teacher will not have that option. I actually printed the ones for her that have like the answers on them so the students don't have to scan the QR codes because she doesn't have iPads to be able to do that with. So you do have the option, don't worry, you don't have to use the QR codes, there's other options available if you don't have the ability to scan the QR codes. So basically the students will start by solving this problem. Then it says your answer will be on the next envelope. So they will scan both of these, whichever one has the answer to this problem will be the next envelope that they open and then inside of that envelope is another question card which will lead them to this envelope which then will lead them to one of these big envelopes. So there are four different big envelopes. Again, they have the QR codes. Now these will be hidden in specific places. So the creator of this escape room tells you like this one needs to go by a pencil sharpener. This one needs to go by a water fountain. So it's super easy to follow. I will be hiding these once my students go to cultural arts. But inside of each one of these envelopes are more of the smaller envelopes and more of the cards. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because setting it up is actually pretty easy because she outlines and tells you exactly what you need to do. But just know that inside of each of these envelopes are more smaller envelopes and more cards that they have to solve. There's a total of 16 cards. So they end up solving 16 problems total. Now the very last envelope, which is actually this one with the star, it's going to have a final card and it's gonna have half of a treasure map. And that is going to lead them to the other half of the treasure map. And then their final like, hey, you escaped their little poster. Overall, I'm super excited for this game. I do think it'll go over really well. I will say it was a lot of prep. I'm not gonna lie. It was totally a lot of prep, but I will check in with you all after I do this with my students to tell you if I think it was worth it in terms of like student engagement. Just a couple other things because you all know I totally go above and beyond and like try to add in little details that make it that much better. So I did find this like Pirates of the Caribbean music on YouTube. So I'm gonna play this in the background. It's a pretty stereotypical Pirates of the Caribbean music. Then I also will have this timer. So I'm gonna make it full screen and this will be their 60 minute countdown timer, which if you are using any other amount of time, like if you only gave your students 45 minutes, just go on YouTube, search 45 minute timer and it will come right up. So this will be displayed on the board the entire time so they can see how much time they have left. And to top it off, I just looked through my little bin of props that I keep at school and I found that I have a hook. I have no idea where I got this, but I'm so happy now that I did. Y'all know I'm gonna be wearing this and I will totally take on the personality of a pirate and embrace every second of it. So some of the envelopes had to be hidden in a picture book and I tried to be clever and I had this picture book, how I became a pirate. I was like, oh, that's perfect. I'll put it in that book. So hopefully my students don't waste time trying to look through all of these picture books. Hopefully someone will notice that this book is sitting here out in the open and they will look through this book. Also, I looked on the back of my hook and it looks like I got this from the Target dollar spot for $1. That certainly is a steal. So my students are at Cultural Arts. I just put out all of the envelopes as you saw. I'm getting really excited to be able to do this with my students. I have the timer up on my board, a 60 minute timer. I will play the music before they come in. But quickly before I start, I did want to tell you all just a couple of like tips that I thought of that I think will make this run a little bit smoother. Within each group, I'm going to assign one person as the team captain and their responsibility is going to be to make sure that all of the cards go back in the correct envelopes. So after they finish solving a problem, they will have to put that card back in the envelope and seal it back up. That way it is ready to go for my block two and I don't have to go through and set it all up again. 
I also am going to designate one person in each group to be like the runner. So when it is time to go find a new envelope, they will be the one up getting it because I don't really want everyone from the group up getting it. They will decide as a group where they think it is hidden and then that one person will go out looking for it. So I think hopefully that will just help it run a little bit better. But the great thing about teaching blocks and being departmentalized is that I will do this twice. So hopefully after I do it with my morning class, I will know any little things that I need to do also in order to make it go even more smoothly for my second block. So if there's anything else that I end up changing, I will be sure to let you all know. So I've told you all that I totally believe in karma and I totally believe in like perfect timing for things. I just went over to my team teacher's room across the hall. I had to heat up my breakfast and she had some of her students going through her like prize box and like kind of sorting stuff and getting rid of stuff. And I saw these sitting there and I was like, oh my goodness, can I borrow those for today? And she's like, yeah, you can have them. So I now have two eye patches, which is perfect. And then this little pouch, I'm just like, hallelujah. This was literally perfect timing. Congratulations, the end is in sight. So I have this pouch and at first I wasn't really sure like what I was gonna do with it besides just wearing it for decoration. But I remembered that I actually had some gold coins or as I called them, gold doubloons in my cabinet. Now these are totally from St. Patrick's Day, hence the shamrock on them, but oh well, it does the trick. So I filled it up with the gold coins and then at the end, as my students escaped from the room, I gave them each a gold coin just to make it a little bit more fun. It is now the end of the day. Overall, I'm in a great mood. The escape room was a huge success. My students definitely had a great time. I love seeing them like get excited as they got closer and closer to the end and then seeing them actually get it. Like it was just awesome. Plus I actually got a super sweet email this morning from a parent because their child was not going to come today or they were going to have like an early dismissal. And then they were telling their parent like, no, Miss Ray's doing an escape room. Like I have to go. And just getting that email and having her like thank me for everything that I do is just amazing. Like I feel so appreciated. And I just think that that's so important in terms of like teacher motivation to feel appreciated for what you do. So overall, I'm in a fantastic mood. I did want to check in with you all in terms of like little tips for running an escape room. I will say that having one student as the leader and putting them in charge of having all of the papers go back into the correct envelopes did help a lot. I will say that from block one to block two, with my block two, I did emphasize reading each card very carefully and making sure you do exactly what it says. Because in my block one, I just noticed a lot of students were just kind of scanning the envelope and like running and doing the next thing or like they would see other other groups going to get an envelope and they'd run over and grab it and I'm like no you're not even there yet so making sure that they do follow it step by step is very important and I will say it was a lot of prep and I kind of emphasized that this morning I was very tired but I do think it was worth it the great thing is now I have it set up for next year and any year that I use it in the future so it was a lot of prep for now but it is something that I can use over and over again which is great I would not prep more than like maybe one of these per school year so maybe next year I'll try to incorporate another one maybe halfway through the year I'll prep that one and then I'll have two Two different escape room games that I can do just do a little bit at a time I feel like sometimes when people see all of these different fun games and activities that they can do in their classroom they try to do all of it and then they get overwhelmed and then they get stressed and then they're like it's not worth it but if you do just a little bit at a time it is totally worth it and it's not as stressful when you just have one or two that you try to add into your school year and then the more experience you get and the longer you're teaching the more activities like this you will have prepared so that is my little spiel I am gonna go ahead and end this vlog because I need to get to the gym we are getting close y'all. We have five days left and next week is our last week, at least for students. Teachers have to come back the following Monday, but we are getting there. And I'm starting to get more and more sad that like I'm gonna have to see my students go. I know I'll get to see most of them next year, like when they're fifth graders at the school. I do have a couple students leaving, but it still is just bittersweet. Like I've had a really good year with them and I feel like I've formed really good relationships and I'm just kind of sad to like have a new class because I love this class so, so much. But if you enjoyed this vlog, please, please, please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so, so much. Don't forget to think positive and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you wanna check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you wanna to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. In the description box, you'll find links from my Teachers Pay Teacher store along with my PO address if you're interested. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.